Hello. The video you are about to watch is on changes to staging criteria under IFRS 9. We recorded this before COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic. However, in the light of recent events, we think it is highly relevant, though it does not address COVID-19 specifically, but has a broader application. We hope you enjoy watching. Hello and welcome to the next in our series of videos on demystifying IFRS 9 for banks. I'm Sandra Thompson. I lead our global IFRS technical function for financial services and financial instruments. I'm here today with Mark Randall, who you've met before. He works with our UK banks and has very much helped them as they implement IFRS 9. Now, those of you who have long memories may remember that episode three of this series was all about staging criteria, significant increase in credit risk and what that means. And we're going to revisit that topic today. And particularly, we're going to talk about can a bank change its staging criteria and if so, when and for what reasons? So the first question is, can a bank change staging criteria? And the short answer is yes, otherwise this video would be very short indeed. Um, there is nothing explicit in IFRS 9, um, but staging criteria is a component of the expected credit loss measurement estimate. And it's no different from any of the other components, things like a probability default or a loss given default. And yes, there can be changes in those estimates from time to time and you probably gather that is a change in estimate. So for accounting purposes, that means the impact of the change is booked with the current year's income statement. So yes, you can change. Mark, I might ask you, what are the possible reasons and triggers for changes and what factors might banks think about? Thanks, Sanjo. I guess if I start with the factors, um, staging criteria themselves are often more of an art than a science. The standard does not define what is a significant increase. And for that reason, we, you really wouldn't expect staging criteria to be changing frequently. You'd want to see a sustained pattern telling you actually there's something, it's not just noise here, there is a systemic trend uh, and, and something isn't performing as was intended. And so for that reason, having good strong governance around uh, changes to ensure there is that clear rationale for them is really important because I think more generally there's a risk of cynicism or uh, investors or regulators mm -hmm. thinking why is a bank changing its staging criteria it's surely to avoid loans that will otherwise go to stage two and to manage the ECL and I think what we're seeing over time is there can be very valid reasons but making sure you're clear on them. Having said that, I think there's kind of three clusters of reasons or prompts um, for changes. So the first would be around the monitoring. So typically when banks designed their staging criteria at the kind of 1 Jan 18, when they went live with IFRS 9, they came up with a number of kind of statistics to help them work out whether a, a, an intended criteria was, was working well or not. So for example, were there um, exposures that leapt straight from stage one to stage three without going through stage two? Were there exposures that were flipping backwards and forwards that maybe indicated that the, the, the criteria was too sensitive? And so having kind of looked through that lens uh, to design the criteria, we would expect that those statistics would be used on an ongoing basis as part of the monitoring. And if they indicate that the way the staging criteria is behaving is veering away from how it was intended to and how it did when it was designed, that might well be a catalyst to say, well, there's something not quite right working here. Let's look into it. So that's the first one around the monitoring. The second one would really be about the inputs to the staging criteria. So for example, if a loan moving onto the credit um, watch list is a trigger for moving on to stage two, if for process reasons that watch list process is changed, so fewer loans go onto that watch list, possibly because you've gone into a recession and you just need to simply manage the number of loans on that watch list, again, you should think about what does that mean? and. The, the staging criteria should not just blindly follow the watch list and say fewer loans on the watch list, fewer loans in stage two, when actually that would mean that loans that had that heightened credit risk, that for operational reasons simply weren't on the watch list, they were still out there, they should still be in stage two. So taking account of those factors. So that's the one around the inputs. And then lastly, I guess it's just new information and learning. And so another example there would be that if a bank has got new insight into how its staging criteria perform in kind of stressed economic situations, let's say from its regulatory stress tests, 
there's a feedback loop that says actually, again, those the, the results aren't as we would expect. There's some anomalies in there, and that again might be um, a reason to update those staging criteria. But hopefully, kind of all those three different areas, being the monitoring, being the inputs, being the new information, there is a there is a basis and there is a rationale for it. It is not simply kind of making arbitrary changes. That, that is clearly not justifiable. Yeah, clearly there's some good reasons. One particular question I have is what about peer data? So suppose Bank A just observes it has more or less loans in stage two than Bank B, C, D and E who seem to appear to have similar books? Yeah, I think that can certainly be a catalyst to go and lift the bonnet to use your phrase and, and re-look at the monitoring and some of those other possible indicators. I don't think of itself that is sufficient to go and change your criteria because it is very difficult to determine that kind of well, how do I really know my risk isn't greater than the other than my peers and, and and there is always going to be a certain spread or staging criteria and that's down to judgments that people made and there there needs to be a clear reason for them so, so a reason to lift the bonnet but not necessarily tinker with what's underneath exactly on its own it's not enough okay fine um so I guess that's around considerations is there anything else to think about and I'm wondering whether the topic of disclosures might loom yet again as it often does <laughs> Yes, and you're exactly right, Mark. So the other area to think about is disclosure. And like any change in estimate, there are disclosures and there are also some specific disclosure requirements in IFRS 7. So what should a bank think about? I think it needs to disclose the three things. One, what is the change? The second is, what's the reason for that change? And Mark's gone through the three possible classes, whether it's monitoring inputs or new information or anything else. And then the third is the impact of the change. For any change in estimate, you need to give the impact on the current period, but also useless to think about what the impact might be on future periods. For example, in the current period, the impact might not be very big, but in a future period, say in an economic downturn, the impact could be much bigger. And that might tie into some of the sensitivity disclosures that we're seeing banks giving. So just to recap, we've shown that yes, a bank can change its staging criteria. However, there needs to be good reasons for that changes, and we've talked about the three main categories. I think linked to that, because it is judgmental, there needs to be good governance and processes around that. This could be an area that will be challenged by regulators or analysts or others. And then finally, we've highlighted the need for good disclosure. I hope you've enjoyed listening and please do join us next time. Bye bye.